Hey guys, welcome to another week of Connect Group and to commemorate the beginning of the Euros, I've decided to put on a uh, European football shirt. It's the only one that I own and uh, no, it's not sponsored. Um, but actually, after I put on this shirt, it just reminded me of a conversation that I first had with Miles when I came to HTBB. And he was explaining to me why the Alpha Course works so well across the Christian body. And he just simply said it's because we're Anglican and nobody in the Christian body is threatened by Anglicans. And I just remember I said to him, oh, I can totally relate to that even though I've never been an Anglican before. But I am an Arsenal supporter and no football supporter is threatened by an Arsenal supporter because quite frankly, we never win anything. But on the note of Alpha, um, it is a wonderful place to bring your friends along to. No one ever feels threatened at Alpha and it's just a great safe space to explore the faith. And this week at Wednesday 8pm, it's the second week of the Alpha course. So if you're still interested in bringing along a friend or a family member, it's not too late. Just sign up at htbb.org slash alpha. And on the first Monday of July, I think it's July the 5th, uh, we're having our Restored Lives course starting. And so that's a course for anyone who is currently going through a tough time in life, separated uh, from their spouse, or maybe they're going through the pain of a divorce, or they have been divorced either recently or a while ago. As a church community, we would love to be walking with you if you happen to fit into any of those categories. And um, yeah, do sign up at htbb.org slash restored lives. But right now, before we cross over to Dan and Kate for this week's Bible study, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we just come before you in gratitude. We thank you that no matter what season of life we're in, Lord, and, and what we're facing into, that you are here with us right here, right now. That you are a God who not only hears our prayers, but you are a God who cares about our prayers. And, and ultimately, it's because you deeply care about us, Lord. And, and we just pray for, firstly, all the guests that are in attendance on the Alpha Course, Lord, that you just bless them uh, with a wonderful experience each and every single Wednesday night for the next nine weeks, Lord Jesus. And also that you, as the God who goes before us, you go before those that are joining the Restored Lives course to just be a blessing and to be a comfort uh, in their season or seasons of pain, Lord God. And just right now, we ask that you come and meet us afresh in this space we call Connect Groups Online, Lord. And we just surrender this time over to you and ask for you to do what only you can and bless it tremendously. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now it's over to Dan and Kate for this week's Bible study. Hey everyone. Hi. Welcome to this week's uh, Connect Group Bible study on tour. We've had to go to my granddad's house because uh, there's building work happening. So we are in a kitchen. Quintessentially. English kitchen. English kitchen. Yeah, would normally be cold, but it's a heat wave. So we're <laughs> going to be looking at Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37, which is the passage that Miles spoke on on Sunday, focusing on uh, kind of the area of comparison, but also mm -hmm. how we put that into practice in the uh, realm of social media as well. So we're going to have a look at that together today. Why don't you uh, Let's read. read it to us? They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Oh, man. Questions. Kick straight off with the questions. Yeah, let's get straight in. What did you like about this passage? What did you not like and why? What stood out to you? What questions do you have? And what can you apply? So start there and see you back in a minute. 
Okay, great. So, um, I mean, before we go right into the passage, it's quite helpful to know a bit of the um, background. Yeah. Because, I mean, the story would be funny enough as it is <laughs> without this background, but like Peter and John have just seen Jesus transfigured <laughs> and his glory before revealed. Before their eyes. Before their eyes. And they're going to argue who is the greatest. Then not, they... Who is the greatest between you and me? Not even who is the greatest it's you know, like, compared to Jesus. It's no, who's the greatest <laughs> between us, even though we've just seen this. And then the disciples of a whole have just failed to set a child free from demonic oppression. <laughs> and then as they leave that, that is when they start discussing... Who is the best? <laughs> and it's just brilliant because the, the Gospels don't airbrush the disciples' flaws. No. Um, I was trying to think. Uh, it's the Euros 2020, even though it's 2021. And there were some England supporters earlier driving past singing, It's Coming Home. I was like, that is like England, like that is just too optimistic, even though they did win the first game. Far too optimistic to be singing that. <laughs> it's like, uh, they're just, I can't work out if this is stupid or brilliant of the disciples. Stupid, like, it's obviously stupid comparing who's the greatest, but also maybe it's brilliant. Like they're just, you know, <laughs> no, it's just stupid. Yeah. I was kind of thinking maybe it's grace. They've understood grace. Finally, like who's the greatest, even though we failed, we're all great. No, yeah. I, I just think they got it wrong. Um, <laughs> so they left that place and they passed through Galilee. And again, all the way through Matthew's gospel, you have these kind of moments where Jesus kind of stills all the noise and he says Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were he avoids the crowd because he wants to teach his disciples and it's amazing isn't it like Jesus prioritizes the 12 over the crowd he, he thinks he can get more done through his team than he can through the thousands and so he retreats to advance with them um, and it's just wonderful and it's wonderful that he wants to do that with us as well each day yeah. he wants to retreat with us uh, as we pray and as we read our bible uh, to to be with him so he says to them the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men they will kill him and after three days he will rise like he couldn't be more plain here like that's pretty direct isn't it but they're afraid to ask and i think they're partly afraid to ask because it's so different to what they're wanting um and it's sort of like they're trying to avoid the question because they're still under the illusion that they are in control and Jesus is going to take them to where they want to go. And I think, you know, I think there's some sort of self-deception going on there. But there's just this amazing moment of intimate sharing. It's a pretty intimate thing of Jesus to say. Mm. Um, but they don't understand him, what he meant, and they're afraid to ask about him. So Jesus is saying, basically, I'm going to die like a loser. Is it one o? Two O's, one O, loser. Uh, <laughs> and they go straight on to say, I'm going to live like a prince. So when they get to Capernaum, he's asking them, what are you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. I think it's funny, like how you said, oh, it's just so blunt what Jesus said here. It's actually pretty clear. And, to, and I just realised Clara today, our little girl, said to me, she said, I'm going to tell you a story. Jesus died on the cross. And then he was alive again. That's basically it there, isn't it? That simple. It's, she gets it, which we come to later, be like a child. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, she gets it. Children can get it. They're and that's trying to overcomplicate gonna... it. Like, like, oh, no, maybe it means something else. Or, or maybe it can't mean what he's saying it means. But, yeah. you know, it's like face value. That's how he's asking us to... To, to, to take, to take it. it. And then this is what the bulk of what Miles focused on, that the disciples fall into the trap of comparison and self-promotion. Comparison, who amongst us is the greatest, and self-promotion, the arguing, because I want to be the greatest and I want to be promoted above you. Now, um, this, the, there's so, uh, and we're going to see in this why it's so bad for us. Comparison steals joy because uh, you're comparing yourself against what God's given other people, it kills teams, distracts from your destiny. Jesus is talking about their destiny here, not just his own, but they're like, oh, let's talk about something else. And it's just not like Jesus. Um, and the end result is we're either left feeling superior to others mm. in pride or, or inferior. inferior. And Jesus doesn't want either of those. He just wants mm. you to know who you are in him, not mm. compared to anyone else. Yeah. But also you get self-promotion, which induces anxiety because what you gain through striving, you sustain through striving, it fuels striving and it encourages the first one, comparison. Um, and so in a moment, Jesus is going to give us some antidotes to that. Um, but And Miles gave us a good question to kind of, kind of get to that. It's like, mm. do I find it difficult to celebrate when others win? 
Like, that's that's the sort of revealer for both of those. Is that when he said, like, write a nice comment under someone's Instagram? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, but let's start with these No, two but I questions. was thinking about that because I was like, some people are going to be like, well, yeah, I do that all the time. And other people might be like, oh, yeah, I don't actually do that. Hmm. And it's like, oh, why don't I do that? Yeah. Maybe I should start. Follow the breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. Question one. Which of these do you find the hardest where? Um, work, family, friends, and Why? And question two, in your place of work, are either of these encouraged as virtues? And if so, how do you combat them? So this is self-promotion and comparison. Uh, where do you find that hardest and why? Mm -hmm. And are those actually, those two things, uh, encouraged in your workplace? Yeah. Okay, so Jesus isn't going to leave us just rebuked. He's going to give us uh, a way to fix the problem as well. So sitting down, again, this is so patient of Jesus. He's just shared something really intimate and they butchered it. And he just takes the time. And again, this is Jesus demonstrating these two things. He's got nothing to lose, nothing to prove. Uh, there's just real deep security as opposed to deep fakes, uh, as Miles compared it to. And he sits down with him and says, look, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. And I just like the way he even says that. Like the fact that it says sitting down, I think tells us something about the the tone mm. of how Jesus is speaking here. Because it's not like he stood over them and he's like, you yeah. know, um, <laughs> anyone who wants to be first must be the very last. Come on, guys, get this. It's I'm on your level. Guys, anyone who wants to be first must be last. And he's like, you've been demonstrating this we're together, like demonstrating yeah. as he says it. And that's sort of, um, that's uh, the antidote to self-promotion, mm -hmm. is to dying to yourself. Daily picking up the cross, which one way that that looks like is choosing to be last, choosing mm -hmm. to put yourself behind, that you don't go for the first, you go for the last. Um, and then he moves into this. He says, he took a little child whom he placed among them, taking mm -hmm. the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children, my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Um, and I think this is celebrating others, which is the antidote to comparison. It's you know, to this is what Miles that. used very apt for the Euros. Uh, when a striker scores, the whole team are rewarded the goal. Like it's not just oh, just the striker gets the point. No, it's <laughs> the whole team that. get the goal. And um, and it's just way more fun to celebrate others. Way, way more fun to celebrate others. Um, as that's going to lead us into our next set of questions, which is discussing these. Question three. In your place of work or home, what does it look like to actively choose to be the very last? Question four. Who do you know who is a great servant and how have they served you? And question five. Discuss verse 36. What do you think Jesus was illustrating by taking this child into his arms? And what does it mean to welcome people like these? Amen. I mean, just my last little thoughts on... I don't know why I said amen then. I don't know what I reckon uh, you were like prophetically thinking that someone said something uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, somebody just prayed and I just finished it in. No, um, I, I mean, I, my thoughts here on this was whoever welcomes these little ones. In that society, children are quite low ranking, but they also have nothing to offer uh -huh. as well. And it's those, you know, it's it's the danger of comparison, self-promotion, is you then only interact with people who can help boost you up. And Jesus is always going for the people who have nothing to offer um, because that's how you get into his kingdom. You don't I do have think we can offer. miss that now, can't we? Because, you know, like youth is becoming more and more like, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you like, look to the youth, what's playing cool with at the toddlers. Moment, that's like... great fun. Rather play Lego with my kids was... than do emails. Um, so, <laughs> uh, not all emails, just some emails. Um, Most emails. Admin. <laughs> um, but I, I think in that side, they've got nothing to offer. They've got nothing to offer that's going to boost them in status. Mm. And I, I think there's something around that. Um, so, Kate, okay, in a moment, they're going to pray for each other. But why don't you mm. pray for us as we, um, as we try and live this out this week? Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for this passage and how funny it is and actually how we shouldn't take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> and, Lord, I thank you that we can, we can look to you to... to inject more joy into our life as we banish comparison and self-promotion and the need for that as we discover who we are in you. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill us with just a real sense, a renewed sense of who we are in you and, um, and a real joy in that and a, and a confidence in that place. Um, come Holy Spirit.
Miles said something as well. He said sometimes we want to strive, especially if we're the only Christians in our family, mm. because we want to show to people how good the blessings of God are. And he just said the fruit of the Spirit is way more compelling than the striving of our of our hands. And and um, just sense that the Spirit might want to remind you of that that He's working in you, He's growing fruit, and we don't have to. S- uh, we'd have to strive to receive this is something he grows in our lives so lord mm-hmm. help us to hold on to that truth again that says we abide in you the fruit grows and and ultimately what draws people to you is when they see how we love each other and not how we have victory or status over each other mm-hmm. help us to love ourselves uh you and those around us as you love us mm-hmm. and um help us to follow you we pray i thank you that in our weakness you are strong Mm. so i pray that you would use even our weaknesses Mm. to point our friends our family closer to you in jesus name Amen. amen amen have a great week next sunday we're kicking off our king and kingdom series on sunday uh, that's gonna be a great uh few weeks looking mm. at the kingdom of god and uh so see you on sunday have a great week see you on sunday and god bless mm.